All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Adisasa tutorial on the lease preparation application. A lease is a written legal contract outlining the terms and conditions under which a lessor, for instance the Kenyan government, accepts to let out a property to an individual or individuals or an entity for a specified period of time. Lease preparation is the final step of the process of development control applications such as change and extension of user, subdivision and amalgamation, and extension of leases. The first step of the application involves getting county approvals. However, it's worth noting that the latter is not currently being done on Adisasa. Step 2 is getting land administration approval or provisional approval for the development control process. Step 3 involves a survey. Amalgamation and subdivision processes have an extra step where they get county recommendations and final approval. Up to that point, the changes that had been proposed are partially implemented, leading up to the lease preparation process. The output of said process is a lease document and a certificate of lease. Lease preparation involves the participation of various interested parties, for instance, the applicant, the beneficiary or beneficiaries, an advocate, and specific ministry officials during the processing of the application. This particular application can be initiated by any member of the public, the landowner ideally, and therefore you don't need to be a professional to do so. For today's tutorial, we will look at the lease preparation following a subdivision application. To begin with, you log into the platform. Key in your Adisasa ID or national ID number, enter your password, and then click continue. Upon doing so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, which will be sent to the phone number you use to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click log in. You'll then be navigated to the dashboard where you'll find a number of services listed under the departments we have in the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. The process we are undertaking is under Land Administration Department. So navigate to the Land Administration section and click View More, and you'll find the application listed under the services offered in this department. Upon clicking on it, you'll be navigated to the Applications page, and here, there are a number of tabs provided, namely, Pending, Ongoing, Completed, and rejected. All the applications that you have initiated will be listed among the tabs provided depending on the level of your application. The pending tab features applications that you have initiated but have not completed, it or they still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have submitted and it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to process the application. The completed tab features applications which have been approved by the relevant ministry officials. The Rejected tab features applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. The reasons will be communicated to you on the application. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the New Application button on the top right hand corner. You will then be navigated to a page with the FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions related to this process. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to acquire knowledge on certain details that might be of interest to you before initiating the application. When you are satisfied with the FAQs, you can proceed and click Next. The next section is on application details. Here, the first requirement would be to specify the application that prompted the preparation of the new leases. However, as you can see, it has already been pre-selected. As such, you can move on to the next field. Where you'll enter the parcel number of the mother parcel, this is the original parcel number. So kindly do so in the format registry, forward slash block, then the block number, with no spacing between, forward slash the parcel number. You'll also enter the approval letter reference number, as it's featured on the land administration approval letter for the subdivision process. If you have any additional information that might be of relevance to this application, you are free to input said information in this text box provided at the bottom. Please note that you must input the information required in the fields with an asterisk sign alongside them, failure to which you will not be able to successfully submit your application. 
If you are satisfied with the details that you have provided in this section, you can go ahead and click on Next. You will be navigated to the Documents page, where you will be required to attach a copy of the Land Administration Approval Letter tied to this process. So go ahead and click on Choose File, and you will be navigated to your local machine or device, where you will upload the document required from the folder it is saved in. And the document will be listed again as the Choose File button. If you have any other documents which you feel will be relevant to the processing of your application, you can click on Additional Documents, type in the name of the document, upload the document by clicking on the Choose File button, and that document will be listed alongside the Choose File button. You can attach several documents in this section one at a time. If you are content with the details that you have provided in this section, you can go ahead and click on Next. The last section is the Verify Details section, with all the details that you have provided. Scroll through the entire page and confirm the details. If satisfied with the information captured, you can go ahead and submit your application. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any of the details you've captured. In our case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click on Yes. You then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box to affirm that the application has been created successfully and then click on Close. You'll have been navigated to the Invoice tab and here you'll be required to pay the surrender fees which is a sum of all the preliminary fees that is conveyancing fee, registration fee and stamp duty fee as is explained in the FAQs section. You'll just click on the Pay button and you'll be provided with the available methods for payment as well as the procedures to be used. Once the payment is made, click on the Confirm button as is featured on the bottom left hand corner. Upon doing so, the status of the payment will change from Pending to Complete. As is captured on the Application Details page, your next step in this process will be to surrender your current mother title document. At this point, a ticket and an invite will have automatically been created by the system in order to enable you to surrender the title. To access the invite, Navigate to the My Appointments tab on the left panel of your screen. Here, there are four distinct tabs provided. There is the Invitations tab, the Upcoming Appointments tab, the Past Appointments tab, and lastly, there is the Missed Appointments tab. The Invitations tab features a complete list of invitations that have been made to you by the different ministry officials for different issues that have been raised. The Upcoming Appointments tab features the appointments which you are supposed to attend to. The Past Appointments tab features appointments that you have already attended to and lastly, the Missed Appointments tab features the appointments which you did not show up for and thus are categorized as such. Our focus is going to be on the Invitations tab. Click on View and you'll be able to book an appointment on the calendar to your right. Select on the date that you'd like to surrender the title and also select the time and then click on Submit. A pop-up will appear requiring you to confirm whether you want to set the appointment and then click on Yes. The invitation will then transition to the Upcoming Appointments tab. Click on the View button and you'll be able to generate a gate pass which you'll present at the gate in your quest to surrender the title. We also have the option of rescheduling in case the date and time you previously selected is no longer convenient for you. For more information on ticketing and appointments in general, click the featured link in the video description to view our tutorial on it. So after you have submitted your title and the ticket has been closed, the Submit Request button will be active and once you click on it, you will be prompted to approve on whether you want to submit the request, then click on Yes, and the application will transition to the ongoing tab, meaning that it has been forwarded to the Ministry for Processing. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application as is featured on the progress bar on the top of your screen to track the progress of your application as it goes through various stages in processing. The application will be received by the Land Administration Department for Processing and they will forward it for valuation where applicable, after which you will be required to make rent payments for the newly determined rents. After the property in question has been valued by the Ministry's Valuation Department, an invoice for payment of new grant fees will be generated to your account and you will receive a notification both on SMS as well as on email prompting you to settle said invoice. As such, 
you will duly navigate to the specific application on your account and on the invoice tab, you'll see the stated fee to be paid for the two subdivided parcels. You'll just click on the pay button and you'll be provided with the available methods for payment as well as the procedures to be used. Once the payment is made, click on the confirm button as is featured on the bottom left hand corner. Upon doing so, the status of payment will change from pending to complete. Subsequently, you'll also be required to enter the beneficiary details for both the subdivided parcels. So you'll navigate to the tab labeled leases, click on the view button on the first parcel, and you'll be navigated to the desired page. On the beneficiary details section, you'll first select the type of ownership, which could either be sole proprietorship, joint proprietorship, or proprietorship in common. In this case, we'll go with sole proprietorship. You'll also need to confirm whether or not the beneficiary appears on the approval letter. If you select no, meaning that the beneficiary does not appear on the approval letter, you'll be required to select the grounds for change of beneficiary. The options highlight various scenarios that lead up to the determination of the beneficiary. They include a letter of administration for deceased proprietors that had not left a will, a grant of will, for deceased proprietors that had left a will, or court order, where there is a court order directing the Director of Land Administration to prepare a lease in the name of said beneficiary. In each scenario, you'll be required to upload a supporting document, for instance, a grant of letters of administration, a grant of probate, or a court order document, respectively. However, in our case, the beneficiary appears on the approval letter and thus will go with the Yes option. Additionally, you'll enter the Adhisasa ID of the beneficiary, and as you can see, the field has an asterisk sign alongside it. As such, the beneficiary must have been registered on Adhisasa at the time of initiating this application. Lastly, you'll select the ownership rights of the beneficiary, which could either be proprietor, an administrator, a trustee, a liquidator, or a trustee in bankruptcy. We'll go with the proprietor option, and then click on the Add Beneficiary button. Upon doing so, the beneficiary details will be populated underneath. In case you made an erroneous entry or selection, you can click on the Remove button on the far right and enter the details once more to your liking. If you're satisfied with the details captured, you can click on Next. And you'll be navigated to the Attach Files section. Here, you'll be required to attach additional documents, if any, which you feel will support the processing of the application. To do so, just type in the name of said document, click on choose file, and you'll be navigated to your local machine or device, whereby you'll upload the document you have prepared, and the document will be listed against the choose file button. If you're satisfied with the details and documents you have submitted, you can proceed and click on submit. You'll then be prompted to affirm whether you want to submit the request, click on yes. You then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box that your application has been updated and then click on close. Click on the process button on the top right corner of the screen and the application will return to the ministry for further processing. Kindly repeat the same steps for the other child parcel as well. When the lease has been approved by the ministry, and the particulars therein have been drafted, you'll get a notification on SMS as well as on email, prompting you to add your preferred advocate to execute on the application. So you'll navigate to the application in question on your account, click on the View button, navigate to the Leases tab, click on View on the first child parcel listed, and you'll be presented with the application details for that specific parcel. Here, you'll first be required to add the person to execute as the beneficiary. When you click on the button in question, a pop-up box will appear, requiring you to select the person to execute as the beneficiary. It could either be the individual executing for himself or herself, or an attorney executing on behalf of the individual. When you choose the attorney option, you'll be required to enter the power of attorney entry number in the format registry, forward slash the entry number, forward slash the month of registration, forward slash the year of registration, and then click on search and the attorney, as well as his or her Adhisasa ID, will be populated underneath. 
All the registered power of attorneys have been digitized to adopt a uniform naming system. In order to confirm the system reference to a power of attorney number you are using, have a conversation with the customer care agents through the chatbot on the platform and they will send you the system reference number to the registered power of attorney. In this case, we'll be going with the self option instead, meaning that the beneficiary is executing for himself or herself and then click on the save button. Upon doing so, the details of the beneficiary, as well as the person executing on behalf of the beneficiary will be listed. Having done that, an Add Advocate button will automatically appear on the top right hand side of your screen and upon clicking on it, you will be prompted to enter the Adisasa ID of the specific advocate of your choosing to act for the beneficiaries. Kindly do so and then click on search and you'll get a message at the bottom of the search box requesting you to click the Add button in case the stated advocate is indeed the one you intend to add. So you'll go ahead and click on the Add button and upon doing so, you'll get a confirmation message that the advocate has been added successfully and when you click on close, you'll see the advocate listed just above the beneficiary details. Kindly navigate back to the other child parcel listed on the listed tab and replicate the process we've just gone through. You will do this for as many parcels as are in the subdivision. However, as you can see, the advocate has not yet acted upon the application, not only by accepting to represent the listed beneficiary or beneficiaries, but also by appending his or her signature. After successfully adding your preferred advocate, he or she will get a notification, not only on their accounts, but also on email and SMS, stating that you have added them as an executor on the application in question, and thus they'll need to access the application on their accounts and accept representation. As such, it is key to note that you, the applicant, must be in communication with the advocate in question throughout the legal execution process for ease of operations. When the advocate logs in, the account they are logged in as is their private account. In order to execute the application, they'll need to switch to the advocate account, so they'll do so by clicking on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for them as an advocate. They'll switch to the advocate account and then proceed with their role in the process. For more information on account upgrades, check out our YouTube tutorial on the same through the link featured in the video description. The advocate will navigate to the land administration department and access the application. On the pending tab, they'll find two constituent applications of the lease preparation application, each of which represent the child parcels. Upon clicking on view, they'll be navigated to the application details page. On the representation section, the individual will be required to choose to either accept or reject to represent the party or parties listed. If they choose not to represent the party or parties, they can click on reject and the parties will get a notification that the advocate has declined to represent and they will have an option of selecting or adding another advocate to represent them. In our case, the advocate will choose to represent all of the party or parties listed. The advocate will then navigate to the add signature section where they will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to do so. To begin with, there's the signing area here, as you can see, which allows them to sign with a computer mouse if they're using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or the index finger if they're using a phone or tablet to access the platform. There's the other option of signing with another device. Upon clicking on this option, a pop-up box will appear, displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on Adisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured above the signing area or in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign on the signing area, they will place the mouse cursor on the signing area, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append their signature. If satisfied, they can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there's the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. There's a pop-up notification that will appear requiring them to affirm the submission of the signature. They'll then click on yes. They'll kindly navigate back to the other child parcel listed on the pending tab and replicate the process. Once the advocate has accepted representation and signed, you'll be notified and you'll navigate to the application status page of each of the child parcels and refresh it. As you can see, on the representation section, 
The advocate you chose to represent has accepted your request and has executed on it. In summary, the person to execute for the beneficiary is required to execute on the application as well. The individual will have gotten a notification communicating the same not only on their accounts but also on email and SMS. Upon accessing the application on the account, they'll navigate to the Add Signature section and append the signature either by signing on the signing area provided or signing with another device using the four aforementioned options. In our case, we'll sign on the signing area and then click on Save. They'll kindly replicate this process for the other child parcel as well. After the beneficiary has executed on the application, he or she will notify you, the applicant, to enable you to submit the application to the Land Registration Department for processing. As such, upon accessing the application in question, you'll find a Submit to Registration button on the top right-hand side of the screen, and upon clicking on it, you'll receive a confirmation message on a pop-up box affirming the submission of the application. Kindly replicate this process for the other child parcel as well. From here on out, the application will be forwarded to the registration department for checking and verifying of the details therein before printing a registered lease document and a certificate of lease as well. When the application is concluded, you or your advocate will be contacted and given details on where and when to pick the mentioned documents. It is key to note that this application process is available for all parcels that had begun the process manually but did not complete to registration. If the survey had already been done and the RIM amended, you will not need to go through the adding of parcels but go directly to initiating this application process. That's it for this tutorial on the lease preparation application for subdivided properties on Adisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well, at adisasa underscore ke on Twitter and on Instagram, and at adisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.